welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny. Today we're here with a good old fashioned get ready with me. It's been a hot minute since we've done one, and today I was like, you know what? I want to sit down and I want to talk about pandas, and I want to do it while I put on my face. Today's actually a really special get ready with me for me because we talk about a realization that I had just recently about how powerful our brain is and how weak we are as individuals sometimes and we put ourselves in these like self-created jails like mental jails and i go all into detail about what i mean in this video but it's basically the idea of you know when i started to do makeup i was like okay i love makeup i want someone to teach me how to do it they teach me how to do it but now i'm all up in my head like okay now i have to use a primer i have to use a foundation i have to use a setting powder i have to do a full coverage concealer have to do brow pomade and a brow this and a brow and so yes it's nice to learn things the professional way or from a professional but ultimately at the end of the day we should really be doing things that fit our needs, that fit our emotional needs, our physical needs, our life needs. And so we kind of talk about that in this video. You know, what are some self-created mental prisons or jails that we create for ourselves? Like, well, I can't make that dinner because I'm missing broccoli. And I always use broccoli and I have to make it with broccoli. Do you though? But do you have carrots? Do you have this? Have you tried branching out? Parker said, uh, you can't be brave unless you're scared. Or like the biggest changes come from a sense of discomfort or even taking risks or experimenting. And I think the same goes for most things in life, whether it's what you're making for dinner, uh, me me meeting a new friend or a new love interest doing your makeup in a different way. I'm not wearing setting powder today. It's not something that I wanted to do. I'm not wearing primer either. I'm not wearing eyeshadow, you know? I have obviously like the eyeshadow stick and stuff like that, but it's just one of those things where I started to create my little makeup bag and it's just my go-to makeup when I wanna feel cute. It takes me a few minutes and I'm not doing things the way I'm supposed to, so I feel a little bad, but I like how I look. So in this video, if you guys are gonna get ready with me, I would like you to take a few minutes to think about, are there any mental jails that I've created for myself? Are there any hurdles that I've created for myself unnecessarily so? If so, think about it, and then maybe share with us in the comments at the end of this video. But if you wanna see how I got this look and skip all the mumbo jumbo, then just, Keep on watching. All right, you guys, let's get started. We are going to get ready. Today's purpose of this get ready with me, the purpose of this get ready with me is no purpose at all. It's just, uh, it's been a minute since I filmed one. So I thought uh, while I got ready, I would film, film it. You know, you can't change a tiger's stripes spots, whatever. I miss sitting down and chatting with you guys. That's the purpose of this get ready with me. I'm going to be using the products that have been in this bag for probably months now. I realized a lot of my makeup is old. I've also realized that I have certain preferences for things and I, I can't quit them. So I was actually using the Bare Minerals um, Complexion Rescue for a while and then I remembered I had this one. This product is no longer available. It's from Urban Decay. They've discontinued it just like they discontinue everything that I love in this world. So I just thought I would use it up before it expires because why would you let something you love go to waste, especially when you know you can't get your hands on it anymore, you know? So let me see if I can, maybe just a little bit, you know, just a little, bringing that love in just a little closer. So I thought we would get ready together and just kind of chat. These are the products that I've just been using recently for everything. And it kind of inspired me because I was like, you know what's funny is when I started watching YouTube, I was just like a fan. I was trying to, you know, watch videos, learn about stuff. I actually stumbled upon YouTube because I, and you guys have heard the story before, if you're new here, there's no new subscribers, by the way. Um, <laughs> If you're new here, that's just a mandatory statement. If you're new here, I lost myself after I had my first son. I felt gross. I didn't feel like myself again. My clothes didn't fit. I didn't take care of myself. I didn't exercise. I didn't eat well. I didn't do my makeup. I was just kind of all over the place. 
trying to find out who I was now since becoming a mom. And so, so YouTube and makeup helped me find my pretty again from the outside in. And doing so, what happens is, you know, you start watching videos and a lot of these videos, depending on who you like to watch, there are people that are telling you the right way to do things. So like, this is the right way to apply your makeup. This is the correct way to do this. This is the correct way to do that. And I think that for those of you that are overthinkers or perfectionists, AKA you have some sort of trauma that we haven't dealt with. So if you are that way, you start to get in your own way and you're like, okay, I can only do my makeup if I do it the correct way. If I do the 10 step process, if I have this product, if I go find the latest and greatest. And after being on YouTube for what, 10 years now almost, I can say that if you are a makeup artist, if you do it for a living, if you do makeup for photography or theater or a famous person or filmography, yes, there is a right way to do things. There is a proper way to do things so that the makeup looks good, so their skin looks flawless, so that you hide certain things that they don't want seen. But if you don't, then makeup shouldn't be so difficult. You know, it shouldn't be so hard. I saw this video from Mally and Mally Runcall. She's the owner of Mally Beauty. Love her. I love her personality. I love what she stands for. She was actually, I think, Beyonce's first makeup artist. And I just love that she did this video and it was so risky. I know how risky this probably was for her. At a time where we were doing the whole super highlighting the under eye and super contouring the sides of your face and all that stuff. In a time where that was the most popular, she did this video on Instagram where she's like, you don't need to set your under eyes with powder. And I was like, oh no, she's so brave. <laughs> this is gonna come back in a bad way. <laughs> and she goes, no. I'm sorry, do you have aging skin? Or do you have dry skin under your eyes? You don't have to set your under eyes with powder. And I was like, are we getting permission to do makeup the way we wanna do it? And I think that's something that is so important for us to remember. If makeup makes us happy and it's going on our face and there are certain rules that yes, they should be used as like maybe guidelines, you know, like, oh, that's a good start. Most people would do this, or it's kind of like teaching kids math, right? We're always told there's a certain way to teach kids math, but ultimately they're gonna find a way to learn it in a way that they can learn it. So I think the same theory or concept should apply to makeup. I was like, oh gosh, I don't want to do makeup because I really don't feel like doing the primer and the foundation and then the powder and then setting everything with the powder. And then I have to go in with the bronzer and then I have to do this and then I have to do that. You guys, I just started to do a sort of tinted moisturizer or like BB cream, these like sort of lightweight sunscreen type products. Love them. I think they have enough coverage for every day. I think they have enough dry down so that you don't have to set it with the powder if you don't have super oily skin, obviously. That's one thing I really need to make sure I say is know your skin, know your skin type, know your skin texture. If you know all of those things and there's certain products that you just love and you wanna use them your way and your method, knock yourself out. And that's kind of what happened to me with this little collection of products, like this little bundle that I have sitting here in front of me. It was like, these are the products I wanna use. This is how I wanna use them. I noticed how I saw myself or how I looked on camera when I was filming or when I took a picture or if I got on stories and talked to you guys. And I was like, it looks all right. I think I'm gonna roll with it. And that's kind of what happened. And these are now the products that I use and yeah I'm not using a primer right now and I haven't used one probably in months and right now I just took a little bit of powder just this uh, powder from Urban Decay that you guys know makes me feel some kind of way and just lightly on a brush and I'm just kind of doing my under eye but like the littlest bit like that's how much I take and that's how much I take off and I just put it on my under eye if there's anything left, I just do a little like, 
and that's it. That's it. And I noticed that throughout the day as like the natural oils of my face come to the surface or that I get sweaty or it's hot outside, the breakdown of my makeup is a lot more forgiving than when I put powder on top. When I put powder on top, my face actually starts to break it down in a very obvious way because there's more product on your face to kind of, for your face to break through, you know? And so I just started to realize the less I have on my face, the better I feel and the better it looks throughout the day. So like by the time I pick up my kids from school or by the time it's bath time or dinner time or whatever, I don't have much happening on my face, but what I do have is it looks like I tried. It looks like I put some effort into the way that I wanted to feel or look. I feel better about myself throughout the day. And I've also kind of let myself off the hook for doing things the way you're supposed to. It's similar to the concept of, hey, did you know so-and-so doesn't like you? And your answer, the only answer should be, how so-and-so feels about me is none of my business. I think oftentimes we spend our time worrying about certain things that aren't any of our business, you know? So for example, if you're gonna use foundation, you have to start with a primer and you have to finish with a powder and you have to contour. No, no you don't, uh, you actually don't. And so what we do is we create sort of like these mental traps like mental jails for ourselves. We're like, well, I can't do that because I really don't have the energy to put on a uh, primer today. Or I, I really, I can't do that because I ran out of my primer, so now I can't do my, my whole face. And that's, that's just part of the deal. That's part of the show. So I think we create, our mind is so powerful, it's dangerous. And we create these sort of, traps, ideas, concepts, little mini jails for ourselves that stop us from really just kind of venturing out, trying new things, trying things that make us happy, thinking outside the box. Like, who would have thought? I'm like, here, hey, I'm just gonna put on this tinted moisturizer and I'm not gonna do powder. Mm. Oh my God. Makeup artists all over the world are freaking out right now. But ultimately, I like how my face looks. <laughs> I don't, I, I feel comfortable and I feel confident in the way that I do it. And isn't that what should matter? Isn't that the thing that's the most important is if you're happy, you're uh, confident, you feel good about yourself, then isn't that what, isn't that so much more beneficial? than putting yourself in the trap of, I can't do that foundation because I ran out of primer. Or I can't do foundation today because I'm not in the mood to, you know, do the primer and the powder and the contour and the this and the that. I think ultimately, you know your skin, you know how it looks, you know how you like it to look, you know which products are the nicest to you, and that's all that really matters, right? Like that's all that should matter is how you feel with the products you're purchasing and putting on your face. So I want you guys to take a minute to think about if you have ever created yourself a mental jail. Like what's an example of a mental jail that you've created for yourself? Like your overthinking has taken over your brain is so powerful and you're like, oh shoot, you know? I can't make that uh, teriyaki chicken for dinner because I don't have ginger. I just, I didn't buy ginger and I don't have ginger right now. And let me see, are my, my head's always tilted so I can't tell if like my eyebrows are symmetrical. So okay, this one, I have a little, a little gap right here that I need to fill. Cause when I look at myself in the mirror, it's the total opposite. So, what is a mental jail that you guys have created for yourself? Like, oh, well, I can't, I can't make that chicken because I don't have uh, ginger. Well, why can't you try something new? Why can't you uh, replace 
the ingredients. So if you're going to make that teriyaki chicken that usually has the brown sugar and the soy sauce and, you know, the rice wine vinegar, why can't you just swap out the ginger with a little bit of mustard powder or barbecue sauce? What if you just leave it out? What if you leave out the ginger that usually makes it like a perfumey, spicy flavor? Do you think it'll still work out? Like what's the, what's the worst that could happen? Your kids are like, oh, is this the teriyaki chicken? And then you can say, no, it's a new recipe I'm trying. I mean, what's literally the worst thing that could happen? You obviously know how to cook chicken properly, right? You know the right temperature, you know it has to be at least 165, you know it's gonna take at least 20 minutes if it's boneless, you know it's gonna take 40 minutes if it has bone in, you know, you know, you know how to cook chicken, so what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that could happen if you don't use primer? <gasps> you know what I mean? Like, ooh, were you feeling adventurous? I think we are. So what are examples, what are a few examples of some mental jails that you have created for yourself? For me, it was a lot having to do with um, clothes. Well, I can't wear that because I don't have boobs. Oh, I can't wear that because since my implants, it just, uh, it, it looked way better on me when, you know, before I had my explant surgery. That looked better on me before whatever. And it's like, who, who, who said that? Is it like a fashion rule that was ingrained to you growing up? Like, did your mom get every single Vogue every month and tell you this is what you should do, this is what you should never do? Or is it something that you feel about yourself on your own? Like, where did that, where did that little mental jail that you've created for yourself come from or start? Is it healthy? Is it rational? Is it kind to you? And if it's not kind, if it's not healthy, if it's not rational, it's probably something you want to let off the hook because it's probably holding you back. So now I take out all the cups from my sports bra. I take out all the cups from my bathing suits. And if there is a little bit of a gap in my bikini top, well, uh, it's real. That's what's there. And I actually like how I look. I actually feel confident because I'm not worried if the cups are crooked or if, you know, they got folded or if they got ruined in the wash and now they're wrinkly and I don't have the matching set. Now what's there is me and an extension of who I am. And if I feel good about myself, it really doesn't matter what you're wearing or what's on your face because people are gonna see your confidence and they're not gonna see that you didn't do a primer or that your bathing suit doesn't have the cups. So, I don't know, I just had that moment recently, that like realization where I was like, why are we this way? Like why, why, why do we create these little traps for ourselves when life can be so, I mean life's already so hard, why do we make it so much harder, you know? Tiny Beauty Blender, and I'm gonna go in with my favorite cream blush. I've actually been using, where are you? The Beauty Blender Bounce in Flirty Rose, but it's a little too pink on days where I wanna do a more neutral, warm, orange nude. So the moviness of Lilium from Stila is a little more blendy, I guess you could say. Like it's a little more, I don't know, it just kind of vibes better with whatever you decide to wear that day. Whereas the rose one from Beauty Blender, I mean, the staying power of that thing is magic, but it's just, it's straight up pink. This one I feel is like a mauve pink. So if you decide to do like a different highlighter, maybe a highlighter that's a little more gold. Y'all, my camera is playing mad games today. I haven't even been filming for like a second and it's already like overheating, oh my goodness. Mondays, am I right? Anyway, so what I was saying is even though it is pink, it's a little more of a mauve pink, so you can kind of play with your highlighters that you use and it's blendier, so it will kind of adapt to whatever highlighter you want to use. So today I'm gonna roll with my kitten from Stila, two Stila favorites, and I'm just gonna flip this over and kind of do a little burr, 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 burr in here. It's just such a, such a nice 
feeling when you grab your favorite makeup products, you put them on your face in the order that you want to put them, you kind of break out of the you're supposed to box, and then the end result is something that you really love. So are you really doing anything wrong? You know what I mean? Like, are you really doing anything you're not supposed to because you're doing things out of order or you're not using like a mattifying primer first? I mean, if you like the end results and you like how you look and it goes well, isn't that what matters ultimately, right? So like, look, we're almost done. All I have to do now is uh, my lips and mascara. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually finish my lips, jump off camera, do my mascara, and then say bye to you guys. And then you guys are gonna be super impressed with the shortest video I've ever done in my life, okay? So just let's just, let's just say that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna roll with. I'm gonna try this color. I bought these um, e.l.f. stains thinking that they were gonna be awesome. And they are, they remind me a lot of a product from, uh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. A lot of, uh, what's the brand that has Dolly? Buxom. They remind me a lot of the Buxom stains, a lot. I would even say they are dupes. I, I'm inclined, but they all have a very orangey base to them. All of them, the red, the pink, the nude, the mauve, they all have a very orangey base. Whereas Buxom, their range is pretty wide as well, but the, the colors are very different. The one that I love, I actually have bought it over and over again because I've actually used it up. It's a very purpley mauve, dry down, wet, fresh, recently applied, layered, whatever. It has a true purpley mauve to it. Whereas all of these have somewhat of an orange, orange base. Very, very, very orange base. However, not bad. I'm gonna jump off camera, do my lashes, and I'll be back to say bye to you guys. All right, you guys, I went ahead and did my lashes. Oh my goodness. When my lower lashes do this thing, like the little ziggy thing, oh my goodness. It's rare, you know? I don't know how to do it. It just happens sometimes when I like wait too long be between uh, brushing out my lashes and then I'm just like, why can't I learn to do this? Not on accident. <laughs> so if you guys are wondering what mascara I'm using, it's the Lash Warrior from Flower Beauty. I get mine at Walmart, walmart.com. I don't think Ulta has it anymore. I used to get it from Ulta. I haven't really checked, but anything that you saw in this video, all the products that I use with the exception I don't even need to show you. With the exception of my face product, I will list and link in the description box of this video. And if you took anything from this video, if you learned anything from this video, let us know in the comment section below. Is there a mental jail that you have created for yourself? Unnecessarily so. If so, and you feel brave enough to share it, let us know in the comment section below. But for now, I think that's it. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, or learned something, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys!